I'm standing here to give support to the parents' voice. The um, New York State uh, exams uh, are be we're being told that they're mandatory, there's no opt-out, when in fact, we all have the right of refusal as parents, and we shouldn't be receiving any guidance that suggests that we do not have the right to refuse. There is a process. You can officially, formally uh, um, indicate to your principal your intention to refuse, and then um, uh, guide your child to tell them how they go about refusing. How they go about refusing is simply do not pick up the pencil, do not put their name on the page, and say, I don't have to take this test. Clearly the state wants all the children to take this test because they need a new baseline for this core curriculum exam. But this test doesn't do these children any good. My children have already taken assessments. I already know where my child stands in terms of uh, grade level achievement. I don't need this exam nor will this exam tell me where my child stands in terms of grade level achievement. You know, I'm an agent of the state when I cast a vote along with six other board members. When I am acting as a parent, I am acting as a parent. And if I happen to be a more visible parent than others, then that's really uh, not a concern to the board or to the State Department of Education or anyone else. I'm acting now as a parent. My daughter's a ninth grade. At SOTA and all of last year she opted out of the standardized tests. I really want to express a lot of gratitude to Commissioners Powell and Adams. The Rochester City School District School Board has voted to approve a resolution to review standardizing because it really is like judging your children on a one, one shot, one time snapshot of who they are. It's like judging a beauty contest based on your driver's license photo. It's just not a valid way of measuring a student's achievement. This particular test this year is horrible for the reasons that Willa just laid out to you. I feel like our kids are being bullied by their teachers. Their teachers are being bullied by their superintendents. Their superintendents are being bullied by the state who will hold back funds if the kids don't take the test. And the states are being bullied by our federal government. So. Um, we gathered two years ago to study this test, and in that first meeting, one wise old man said, why don't you just not take the test? So here we are two years later. I'm grateful for all the energy that um, parents and teachers have given uh, towards refusing to take this, this latest test. As a parent, as a U.S. citizen, it is wonderful that I am able to coach my child to refuse these tests. I can't refuse my child has to refuse it, so my support for her is in coaching her and giving her a real clear vision of why she wouldn't take it. I'm counseling my children to go into school and um, politely say thank you, but I'm not taking this test. And I'm taking this stand for several reasons. There's um, quite a number of hours spent in preparing the children for the test, as well as the time that they're actually taking it. And the, the state tests that are scheduled to begin next week are not the only test opportunities that the state has. There are other standardized tests that are given to the children multiple times throughout the school year. The NWEA, the Ames Web, um, there will be other benchmarking and there will be some field testing as well. So there are multiple um, amounts of testing that the children have to sit through. And one of the pieces that I'm... Um, very concerned about, especially being a city school district employee, is that the APPR um, performance evaluation for teachers and city school district employees is going to be partially based on the results of the standardized testing. I think that's completely unfair. There's absolutely no way to quantify all of the hours that teachers spend on their own time in the evenings and at home. That's not going to be factored in. It's hard to quantify how much love and respect and care for the children and the families that our teachers work with. And um, I don't think that a test, you know, that can be given, capturing just a moment in time, it will reflect the great skills that our teachers have. Some test questions the children will have to um, respond to that they haven't even had the opportunity to learn yet this year. So, and the, the state has provided us with that information. The difficult thing is, it, uh, it kind of looks like they're trying to set up the children to fail, or at least do poor um, parents need to do, is to uh, write a letter. I, what I did was sent a letter in to my children's teachers, their 
principal. Uh, he forwarded it to the superintendent just to share information, really. Um, but I'll, it's just to let the you know the administration know that the children will not be taking the test, and um, they'll be able to provide their refusal in a polite, and quiet manner with um, probably the principal. I imagine. I don't know if you know a lot about the Common Core, but the way that the way that a lot of us are understanding the Common Core, because it hasn't even been fully explained to teachers, is that it's the content is much more rigorous. So you're taking a kindergartner and you're putting them in a kindergarten classroom, but you're giving them first grade content and so on and so forth and on up. So my eighth grader is going into eighth grade this year as an eighth grader and given ninth grade content because the rigor is so much harder not being prepared. I mean, he's never been taught this way as all of the students that are in this boat this year. They, they've never been introduced to this type of rigor before. And I'm not saying that it's a bad thing to give them to, to give them um, more difficult and more challenging content. I'm saying that you have to help these children and you have to help the teachers. I mean, I haven't even been trained on, com on Common Core. I haven't even been explained fully what Common Core is. And I'm a teacher and I teach sixth grade and I haven't even been given the Common Core this year. And as a teacher, my students are taking this test next week. And I, have, I haven't been given any, any Common Core to teach them. I feel like this year our students are being used as guinea pigs for future years. My biggest concern with this test is if you want the child to test level, give the teachers the resources that they need to teach the children at a fifth grade level. I mean, I just, I don't understand this whole testing thing. What are you really testing? You know, it seems like millions of dollars are going into this testing for what? You know, I'm, I don't, when I'm at home, I don't set my children up for failure and I don't expect the school to set them up for failure. You know, I bring them to school to succeed, and that's what I expect the district to do as well, to, you know, set them up for, to succeed. But, you know, I don't feel that the teachers have been prepped enough to um, you know, prepare the kids for the, the curriculum and then the testing also. So how do you expect for them to go into a testing situation knowing common core curriculums when you're not, you know, an expert, expert in the, this field yet? The kids shouldn't have no anxiety going through this, telling them there's testing and just, you know, giving the kid more problems. The kids are, have enough problems. Let's not give the kid any more problems. I mean, it's testing or they need to score so high or, you know, just let them learn on, you know, as they can at their own pace. In my situation, um, my son in particular is a fourth grade, a fifth grade student. He has selective mutism. So he is actually taken out of his classroom with another uh, person who is going to be proctoring the test, he may not know that person, which means he's not gonna communicate with that person at all. He'll stand there uh, completely anxious about the test, about where he is, he's in a different environment with a different person. He'll never communicate to them that he even has to use the bathroom if he needs to use the bathroom. They're supposed to read him this test and expect him to answer verbally or help him write things down. That's just not gonna happen. How can you expect a child to perform at a high level and my child is highly intelligent and in the classroom he does very well but you put a test in front of him with a person he does not know and his scores go down 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 one like we said a snapshot of time reflect what our teachers are doing for our students when our students are in the class throughout the whole year and they're excelling through the whole year and then they sit down in front of this test for seven minutes or however long this test is and they're expected that portion of time is going to show everything that has taken place over the course of a year it's just not going to happen right because they don't take into consideration you know a child might be having a bad you know, bad three days you know something could be going wrong in that child's life for that period of time and now you're basing you know the whole school year on those three days for the child and for the teacher and myself i mean i'll we have tons of friends who are teachers. Yes. Um, and so for me, I feel like it's unfair to the teacher. It's unfair to a friend of mine. It's unfair to my child. It's unfair to the principal of the school who has to deal with his income being determined or how his school is being seen or her school at that, you know, for whatever matter is being seen because of a test that lasts this long. And that person may have been in place for years and years and years. So it is it's ridiculous. Now, how